Well, good morning, and welcome to First Lutheran Church's virtual worship service. Um, this is Friday. I'm taping on Friday because I have to go to Lucerne tomorrow to uh, for band practice, and um, but it will be posted so that you can watch it either tomorrow or or Sunday. So whichever the case may be, um, I hope this is an uplifting time for you. Um, one of the things that came down this week in California is the fact that you cannot sing in a worship service, but uh, when it's a virtual worship service, you can do pretty much whatever you want. And so we're going to sing today, uh, and we're probably going to sing at the church tomorrow, but um, we're going to basically tell people that they're not supposed to and, and wait for a ruling uh, from the, the governor and, and from the uh, leadership of the churches in California. So with that said, a welcome again, and uh, let's begin our service with a song called, I Will Celebrate. Singing along, I hope you had got the bulletin in the in the mail, or um, that I sent out to everybody. And um, it'd be great if you're singing along. And if people look at you like uh, like they don't know what you're doing, just say I'm praising the Lord, and that's what we're here to do. Uh, I have a number of announcements this morning. First of all, welcome everybody uh, that watches our weekly video. It's a joy to have you uh, join us and. I pray that the message that is communicated today is one that is uplifting for you and timely uh, based on what's going on in our society today. Um, as I said earlier, uh, the governor has put out some new mandates uh, which prevents churches from singing or chanting. Um, and so, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty clear that that what's going on is is pressure on the church for whatever reason. Um, I, I just think it's somewhat unfair. I'm not trying to be political, but um, you know, protesters are allowed to do their thing um, shoulder to shoulder without masks uh, and scream and yell obscenities. Uh, that's okay, but gathering in a church and singing uh, is not okay, which is to me a double standard. So I'm, I'm just praying, and that's going to be part of our prayer time today. I'm just praying that the people that govern our country uh, would start looking at what the founding fathers have said about the what the principles and, and the morals and the values uh, that this country was built on, where it started, and started at you know at, at the cross, 
and um, and spiritual well-being is as important as anything and so I'm just praying that uh, they will lift that restriction and that we can start singing in the sanctuary again um, next week on the um, the 19th is it the 19th yes the 19th is uh, food cover so please if you're watching this and you know somebody that may need some food or some help tell them that uh, we are open from 1 to 2 next Sunday the 19th to hand out food for those who are in need also uh, on Monday to, um, which is the, the 13th the Elks Lodge will once again be doing a food pickup a drive-through where people come through and they drop off their the you know, non-perishable items, which uh, are loaded onto, you know, our members' trucks and cars and so on. And we use that uh, to give out to the community in Lucerne and beyond. So um, if you can help out, that would be great. Josette um, is the one that's kind of overseeing that. Um, you can get her, call her at 972-4180, and she will uh, let you know the, the particulars on how you can help uh, gather the food and then get it over to the church. Um, I think that is pretty much the uh, the announcements for today. Um, so let's carry on with the time of confession and absolution. My friends in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, he will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and we cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. But for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake he forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his very authority, I therefore forgive each of you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the time in our service where we would share the peace, and I would say the peace of the Lord be with you always, and you would respond, and also with you. Um, obviously, we can't do that, certainly not in a virtual service, um, but what we do kind of uh, in our church is just kind of wave to each other. Uh, but I guess, again, I say, um, in these times of challenge with this coronavirus and other things that are going on, um, it's important to keep in touch with people that you that you care about and so just if you have a chance give somebody a call today and say you know what just uh, was thinking about you and wanted to know that that uh, God's blessing you and through this time of challenge and just hang in there so that'd be great if you could do that our next song is called change my heart oh God and uh, sing along with me if you can
Let's pray the prayer of the day. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your world. By your spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. The first reading for this morning is taken from the 8th chapter of the book of Romans, verses 12 through 17. So then, brothers, we are debtors, not to the to the flesh to live according to the flesh for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body you will live for all who are led by the spirit of god are sons of god for you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear but you have received the spirit of adoptions as son by whom we cry abba father the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, providing or provided we suffer with him in order that we may also be glorified with him. This is the gospel or the, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading for this morning is taken from the 13th chapter of the gospel of Matthew, beginning at verse one. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. And great crowds gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat down. And the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil. And immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when they, the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they didn't had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand that the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a while and then tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word. Immediately he falls. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Our sermon song for this morning is a song called Hallelujah. Um, and uh, Richard Cohen was the, or Leonard Cohen, excuse me, was the, the fellow that made this popular. So uh, let's sing that one together. Sing to you, I 
so much for the opportunity to be here this day um, in worship of you and with your within your presence thank you for being here with us this day Lord and I ask that you bless this message and uh, bless those who are listening to it that the spirit may lift them up this day and this week in Jesus name we pray amen my brothers and sisters in Christ grace mercy and peace to you this day and always from God our Father from the Holy Spirit with us this day and every day, and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Growing pains. You know, I liken the term growing pains to the challenges we face as we grow up, and then the further, further challenges we face as we deal with the growing pains of our own children or those of others being reared in today's society, a society that is moving for certain, but unfortunately in the wrong direction. Let me give you an example of the reality of growing pains in this world for a young man. This kid is 15 years old, but the pains of growing up were deeply rooted in his brain. His home life was one of fear, being raised in a very strict paternal setting, making it difficult to deal with the consequences of making even the smallest of mistakes. The kid was a, a little on the chunky side, but solid as a rock. He was active in virtually every sport around and excelled in most. But his size was always a point of contention for the other kids in the school. I mean, he was only 15 years old and weighed well over 50, uh, 200 pounds. They joked with him and made fun of him, generally making him feel inferior much the same as the environment he had to deal with at home. When you tell someone enough times that they're not up to par with the rest of the world, they eventually will believe it. The kids had everything to be happy about. He was one of the strongest kids in school, one of the most athletic. As a matter of fact, could have been a professional hockey player and certainly was not as intellectually inferior as he was told almost every day by many. The pain of growing up was excessive, to say the least, and over the years the kid developed an inferiority complex second to none. He took it in stride, never showing his emotion, but the bullying really hurt him. To make matters worse, the school he attended began studying the book The Lord of the Flies, and it didn't take long before the name of one of the characters in the book became the nickname of this kid, Piggy. Do you remember that name? If you studied the book, you'll know who, what I'm talking about. It was a blow to his psyche, and the pain was real. The whole school called this kid Piggy. They thought it was funny, but to the kid it wasn't funny at all. 
And so he spent most of his life trying to prove the system, his family, everyone, that he was more than they thought he was. The kid knows exactly what human challenges are all about, specific to the growing pains of growing up. I know for sure that I am right in this case, because you see, that kid, that kid was me. I know all about the pains of growing up in a world filled with sin and the impact of evil actions on a person's life. And that is why this gospel passage this morning is so important to us all. Here Jesus refers to the sowing of the word of God, but it can just as easily mean our growing up. We live in an environment where the obstacles we face in life are overwhelming at times and often destructive. And that's where we need to focus this day. So let's kind of unbundle what Jesus is saying in, in this parable of the sower. First, he says that some of the seeds fell on the path. Needless to say, nothing is gonna grow when you plant it on a path made from hard soil or concrete or asphalt. As it pertains to growing pains, a person is not going to grow if, if they are planted in an environment of hardened hearts with no nurturing and no guidance. One will be swallowed up, not by birds, but by the evils of society. That is a fact. We are warned of the path of life we walk in Proverbs 2, verses 12 through 14, which says, from men of perverted speech, who forsake the paths of righteousness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in the uh, per perversiveness, uh, or, or, uh, perversiveness, yes, of evil. And Jesus warns of this in Matthew 18, whoever causes one of these little ones to believe me in, in, in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and be, to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Our job with this world of seeds planted on hard ground is to be in constant prayer for guidance, then to pick up the seeds, turn the ground on the hard path such that it supports growth and lead the seed on a path to eternal righteousness as it grows in Christ. That's it. If the seed isn't going to grow on hard ground, then as Christians we either loosen the soil or remove the seed and set it down where it will grow. And that place of growth is at the base of the cross where the blood of Jesus Christ can feed it. How about the seeds on rocky, on rocky ground? I don't know how many of you have ever worked on a farm. I have. But it seems sometimes like farms grow rocks. I remember at my uncle's farm, he would plow the field and lo and behold, there they were, growing like crazy. He would go out and pick up all the exposed rock. That's what farmers do. Two reasons, first rocks are danger to the farm equipment as the crops grow and them little devils hide from you, you know. And second, nothing grows on a rock. Well, there may be a sprout or two that comes up for a while, but the end result is the same. The sprout withers and dies. So the question for us is this. How can we grow without experiencing some level of pain when the foundation in which we are planted does not support growth? I mean, that's a great question. Trying to grow on a rock? That's what our kids face, folks. Rocks. Rocks that are gods of materialism, and if it feels good, then it must be okay, and open sexuality, and anything else the world and Satan puts before them. How can they grow in the cross of Christ if they don't even know that a cross exists? Those rocks in the field need to be picked up and thrown out, and the seedlings of our future planted in the rich soil that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we are the sowers who are called to do that in this community and beyond. How about the seeds that grow up among thorns? If that isn't a description of, of the human challenge, I don't know what else is. Seeds of growth being choked by the sin of this world. We see it everywhere on TV, radio, video games, the constant need for instant gratification, the call to sin from a world that overwhelms us with temptation. You want to be happy? Buy this. You want to feel good about yourself? Take these pills. You want prestige? Buy the car you can't afford. 
You want satisfaction, go to Las Vegas where everything that goes on there stays there. My God, the thorns are stunting our growth beyond description. No wonder we have growing pains. We have a situation where Satan is having a grand old time choking the very gospel message, message that is supposed to lead us in growth to our ultimate home and eternity. In Matthew 13, 27 through 30, Jesus says, And the servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. So the servant said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat among them. And here's the important part. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the harvest time, judgment time, folks, I will tell the reapers, Gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned. But gather the wheat into my barn. I believe that what Jesus is saying here is that there will always be weeds trying to choke our growth in the Word, but we must continue to focus on God's Word in these times of challenge because we will be made, uh, safe among the weeds and ultimately the weeds will be burned in hell. That is the kind of instruction we need in our lives today. When we follow it, then all the piggies in the world will be given strength to cope with the, the hurt of life. All the challenges we face as we grow in Christ will be removed. All the pain we feel as we grow in a world filled with sin will depart forever. On the day of judgment, we will be forever lifted from the burden of the human predicament. The pains of growing will cease and we will be free. Thank God for Jesus and his sacrifice, the very word of good news given to a world that doesn't deserve it, but to whom we are instructed to communicate it as Christians, to communicate that we grow and we will grow in the study of his word. In this parable, Jesus refers to the good soil on which the seeds of eternal life are planted. This is an incredible opportunity for every Christian as we tend to the soil in which we plant the seeds of eternal life. Jesus also says the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. My friends in Christ, that has to, that has to change. As the thorns of life choke, choke our growth, as the rocks don't support it, as the hardened path causes those who want to grow to be eaten alive, we must now and always be planting in good soil in the very word of God and to communicate it to everyone who will listen to it, learn from it, and be saved because of it. To this there is no doubt, for God will harvest the crop and bring judgment to all. The good will be separated from the evil, the wheat from the chaff, the very cross of forgiveness will be separated from the grave of hell. It is time to start planting ourselves and our neighbors on good soil. That's the instruction we have for our church and that is the instruction to all churches. And we've got to do that, we've got to be communicating the good news, planting the seed in good soil. Our lives, folks, depend on it. Trust me when I say that. In Jesus' name, amen. As Christians, we communicate to the world what we believe through the words of Scripture, through the means of grace, and through the, the creeds. So as brothers and sisters in Christ, I ask you to confess with me uh, what you believe through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Um, this is the time in our service where we would do the offering. Uh, when we're in the sanctuary, we don't hand out the plates. We leave one in the back, uh, on the coffee table in the back, or a stool and people will drop their offerings in there as they come in or as they leave. But if, if uh, you are touched by 
you know what we do each and every week with this video service um, and you feel called to send an offering in it would be most appreciated uh, many people have done that and thank you those those people know who you are who they are and I want to thank you so much it's allowed us to continue to do the outreach um, to this community and beyond uh, in spite of what's been going on and so we're still feeding the poor we're still providing whatever kind of support we can um, and as long as we continue to be financially stable we'll be able to continue to do that and under the circumstances with uh, so many people shut in because of this coronavirus thing uh, they can't get to church although they send in their offering I'm asking you that if you feel called to do that please do so um, you can send an offering to First Lutheran Church PO Box 458 Lucerne California 95458 that's First Lutheran Church PO Box 458 Lucerne, California, 95458. Let us go into a, a time of prayer. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all who suffer and uh, for their needs. Heavenly Father, we pray especially this day for our civil servants, our police officers and first responders, that you would protect them in this time of, of significant challenge where uh, innocent people are being killed, police officers trying to do their best to protect the, the folks that, are, that are, are run, trying to run a business, innocent folks that are just being um, killed and harassed and beaten uh, for no reason. I, I mean, there's, there's, it's one thing to protest, it's another thing to destroy human life to destroy property um, and I just pray that you would protect those uh, civil servants especially again the police and the first responders but also those who are serving us in the military uh, whether it be here or somewhere else in the world that, that you would protect them as well as they try to bring freedom to areas that have known nothing but war and, and hate and uh, Lord I just pray that you would uh, guide them and, and that your light may shine through their heart so bright that, that the people they come in contact with know that the only way to eternal life is through Jesus 